Hey guys, Carl W Design, and today I'd like to have a go at recreating this. This is a beautiful animated GIF by Bees and Bombs, or Dave White. Uh, he makes awesome stuff like this, and I will leave a link in the description. Uh, check out his amazing geometric repeating GIFs like this. He's got some really cool stuff. Okay, let's have a go at this one in Blender. So I'm going to delete my default cube, go to my main collection, and I'm going to make a circle. Um, I'm probably, you could turn that up to 64 vertices. I'll just leave it because I'm on a laptop. It might be a bit laggy. So tab into edit mode, F to make a face, and then RX90 to flip it up so we can look at it properly in front view. Just going to call it circle.000. And we need to talk about a little bit of animation. So if we have a look at um, how this works, we sort of have a circle spawn from nothingness and it grows up to a large size and then goes back to nothingness all the while moving across. So let's do that. I'm going to make this animation like 300 frames for now. We'll trim it later to be a perfect loop. Um, I want this thing to happen over like eight seconds. So at frame one, I'm going to put in a location that's I insert keyframe and then over 240 frames. So eight seconds at 30 FPS I'm going to GX eight meters. So that will slide over by eight meters. Um, and I need to, I insert location. Okay. So we just have this basic animation. If we go to 120 halfway, then I'm going to scale 0 0.6 and that should be good from what I just tested earlier. So I will insert a scaling keyframe. Okay. Why did that happen? I'm just going to close VLC. Apologies. I am new to Linux. I'm having some troubles. Um, okay. Let's continue. So we'll go back to frame one and I will scale zero enter insert scaling so now it spawns and grows up and we just need it to scale zero enter insert scaling so there we go grows up and then grows down again okay so let's go to about here we need to talk about making a big array of these things so i am going to um, first of all, let's just push T and I'm going to make these linear because that might be a little bit nicer in the final result rather than having them smoothly animate in and out. I just want it all to be linear. And the other thing is shift E and I'm going to make this cyclic. Okay. So if we zoom out a lot, you can see what that does. It just makes it happen again and again. Okay, so now let's talk about this array I want to create. So I've got the, the 3D cursor still at the world origin. So shift A and we can just make an empty, just do a plain axis. That's fine. Um, I like to keep my scene especially clean. So I'm going to give it the same sort of naming scheme. And then we want to parent this. So select the circle, select the empty second and then control P parent to object, keep transform. Okay. So that doesn't really do anything effectively now, but what we can do is select the empty and we can rotate like that. Okay. So if I select both, um, I'm going to make an array of 15 of these. So if I shift D for duplicate, and then that'll let you grab and drag, but I want to rotate. So I push R that'll let me rotate and I'm just going to type in 24. Okay, so 360 divided by 15. And if I now push Shift R for repeat, then you can see how we can quickly make our array like that. And so you can see all of these animate in time, which is not exactly what we want. So we need a way to offset these. Um, and what I'd like to do is because we have 15, if I offset each one by four frames, then that's going to work out neatly that they, the first one sort of takes off and then 60 frames later, the last one will take off. Um, so I actually, if I just select maybe the first circle, I'm going to push B in the outliner and draw a box over all 15 of them, right click select. Okay. And then under scripting, I have gotten this script from the internet this morning. 
um, here is a link to the um, the forum where this person Lero posted this and um, you know huge thanks to him this is a big time saver I was trying to do this by hand earlier and it's very frustrating and slow it took about two minutes so if I just set the offset to four and I've got all the circles selected then I just run this script and that is done okay so you can see now that they are spawning like that okay so every 60 frames we sort of complete spawning them and then it's actually 180 frames of nothingness and then it goes again so really what we need now is to push a and select everything and then if i shift d and i can drag but i just want to right click to drop those back in place and then down here in the timeline i'm just going to g60 Okay, so what we should have now is half the animation. So we spawn for 120 frames, and then for 120 we're not spawning. So if we do that one more time, I'm going to A to select all, Shift D, right click, and then down here we can G120. And I believe that should be the complete animation. Okay, so that's working perfectly, and we can actually trim, I believe we can trim to just 60 frames overall, I think. Let's have a look. Um, no, we need to trim to 120, I believe. Let's have a look at that. Yes, I believe that's looping perfectly. Okay, and so I'll leave it up to you guys. Really, um, what you should do is I'm just going to select one circle. Let's let's select circle zero, and I'm going to give it uh, my white material. Very quickly, I'll show um, under the material object. It's just this simple shader here and emission. Honestly, with EV, it's just you don't even need this light path thing. You can just do uh, emission straight into surface. That's all it is. And um, remember under color management to use default and base contrast for this sort of graphics. If you're doing 3D graphics, I recommend the default filmic mode, which is really, really good, solves lots of problems. But for this 2D sort of graphics thing, use default and base contrast. And then whatever color you choose here, you will get in the render. If we go to the world, I'll just make it sort of like a dark gray. And that should be it. I can go to rendered. And we have, oh, we do need to select all of the circles and apply that material. So I'm just going to B for box select, grab them all. We have, there we go, uh, right click select. And I think that keeps that one as the active. So then we can just control L materials. There we are. Okay. So there we have it. I believe that's finished. There's all sorts of cool things you could do with this. You could um, talk about or think about colors. It could be that the colors are random or that they um, slowly morph. It morphs the colors over time. Um, you could sort of parent everything to an empty and then have the empty twist or move. Um, using various um, types of you know animation controls in here you could do like you could play around with these dynamic effects or all sorts of things and of course you could get into um, the sort of 3d aspect of it like um, well this is rendering very slowly but um, you know you could have the camera from an isometric point of view and then to morph around and all sorts of cool things so um, I'll leave it up to you creative people to make something cool and post me a link if you do create something awesome. Okay, thanks a lot. Until next time, bye-bye.